Some of the things that I want to be able to communicate with you guys is uh, how do you start with a logo here and begin to think about how the logo is used. So what I'm, what I'm going to show you guys is basically a, a series of slides that I've collected um, at my job and some that I um, personally worked on and some that I haven't, some that have uh, just been <coughs> reference material that I've used in creating uh, brand guidelines. And like I said, this is a good way for you guys to really see how um, the logo is really, um, how much thought goes into developing a brand system. <coughs> you guys have all worked on developing logos but you need to start to think about how does that logo get used on various different applications. So let's go through this real quick. So this first example is the culture bus. So obviously this is the what? Can anybody tell me what this is called? Mark. Mark. That's, that's very correct. Okay. All right. So... This is the mark right here, and what you see is here is um, basically when we develop this, this guideline, we show, first of all, what is the logo. So if you look in this top corner, this says Culture Bus logo. Okay, and these are the things that we talked about, remember? So this is the Culture Bus mark, logo type or word mark. And then together, it's the Culture Bus logo, okay? All right? So these are just, uh, what I want to show you is these are different variations and ways that we go about systematically putting together. Do you understand systematic? Okay. Um, putting together um, the logo with the logo type. Everything has to have some sort of relationship with each other. Okay? So if you're looking at this particular symbol, this mark right here, um, I'm using the U, which is from here, to demonstrate how much spacing is here. And the same here. So it all has a relation once it's outside, once it's, once it's here. So when you look at it in this form, the spacing and everything works because you're working with um, spacing that means something. You're not just placing it there. You're placing it there so that, um, so that it works um, on lots of different mediums and it doesn't become, it doesn't feel like the logo is too far from the logo type or it doesn't fit right. So these are some of the things that when you're developing your logo and you have your mark already established and you're putting in the words in there, the word mark, um, taking consideration how does that word mark and that mark work together in the logo. Um, is there spacing? Is there spacing shown here that you can use to, to give yourself some sort of uh, a guideline for how much space needs to be between, between here on the sides. And we'll go through some more examples. So this shown here is just showing, you know, the, uh, the, the different logos. It's not really relevant to what you guys are doing now. Color system. Okay, so... <clears throat> Once you get into a color system, you want to be able to pick colors that mean something. These colors obviously are red, yellow, and black. And um, they were basically developed because this culture bus is supposed to be sort of an ad adventurous um, experience for travelers coming from out of town. So. Um, the red and the, and the yellow are sort of these bright colors, and the black is sort of the, the color that sort of serves as the foundation color for all of them. 
So the thinking behind this was really to try to develop something that um, gave the uh, gave the viewers, the public, this exciting experience uh, as they ride on the bus. So you can see here how um, the logo can be used on all these different colors. So if you look at these, the difference the, the difference from them is obviously the color, but the colors all relate because we're still using the same colors, right? So we're using the red, black, yellow, and those are still the colors. And this is having the red on the yellow, and they're just reversing this type out to white, and the black is still there. On this one, this is just using a one color. Now remember, uh, for some of you, um, it's very important when you're developing a logo because if you're doing something that's um, got a lot of colors in it, you need to also have a version that can be used in one color. So, so in this example, I'm showing how this logo is reversed out of this red for this color and this one's just reversed out of black. And it could be the other way around. It could be just a black logo as well. So this demonstrates another example of how the logo is going to be used. So when developing the logo and finishing it out, try to uh, think about how the logo is going to be used and what it's going to be used on. So for some of you, you're developing home pages for websites. Some of you are developing brochures. You want to be able to um, develop uh, some sort of system so that you have some space around, some white space around that logo because if you have type or you have an image that's intruding in this space, it makes it more difficult for you to be able to uh, appreciate and see this logo. Now, there are instances where this logo may be on top of an image. But if the image is in, for example, if the image is in grayscale, so it's only one color image, or if this logo is on top of the sky where it's just blue, then you don't have that same problem. But if you put this logo on top of a complex drawing or illustration that has a lot of things going on, it's going to make it very difficult for you to be able to see that. So just keep that in mind. So a lot of times when we develop uh, a brand guideline, we have to also tell people what not to do. Because a lot of times um, there are people that may try to take, if they don't know what they can't do, they may try to do things that are not appropriate uses for the logo. Now, this is not directly related to what you guys are doing now, but I think it's important for you guys to see this because um, you need to have in your mind not only what you want to do with the logo, but what you do not want the logo to be. So, for um, developing this, you don't need to do this. I'm not asking you to do this. What I'm asking you to do is to think about all of the decisions that you make. Okay? Make sure that when you are developing your system, your brand system, that you are not doing anything that's going to uh, damage the readability or the strength of your logo. Okay, so here what I'm going to show you is what I'm going to show you is here is basically 
what happens when you take this logo or take a logo and then you start to implement it on to uh, other systems other like uh, for example this is a bus wrap um, some of you are going to be doing some merchandise where you're going to be putting stuff on hats um, brochures websites uh, vehicles and uh, you really need to take in consideration uh, how you can use parts of the logo to do things on the bus or do things on the brochure and whatnot. I'm going to go back to this first slide real quick. I want to show you guys something. <coughs> if you notice here in the background, it's kind of hard to see, but if you see this line right here, you can kind of see how we use part of this symbol as a background. So those are certain, <coughs> certainly those are definitely techniques that you can think about possibly using it. So uh, maybe your logo is used as a textural background um, for a brochure or a bus or whatever you want to do it for. Or maybe it's uh, enclosed inside a box or something and it's just maybe the logo's at the top. And then everything that's within this area is an image or something like that. And you're only using the logo as sort of a way of defining that this particular image belongs to, um, to, to this system. So let me, let me go back to where I was. So we start to look at this. We start to think about how um, we can use the logo to actually build some sort of uh, brand presence. Um, in this example, we obviously want to use a yellow bus because that's part of the color of the culture bus, right? We want to use that. And then for this particular project, we couldn't really do, have that much uh, creative freedom to do more with this bus. I wish we kind of could have, but um, you can see how also, though, that you can still apply graphics and stuff like that, but all of this is related to this particular uh, mark. Even the typography that's used in here has that same sort of bold weight. It's, uh, it has some roundness to it. If you look at the the L here, the T, it's very rounded, but it's also clean and easy to read. Okay, so here we're going into some Nike examples, and um, I wanted to show you guys some of these because I think everybody knows what Nike is. Right? Everybody knows what Nike is, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I wanted to show this because everybody obviously knows what Nike is. And I think it's, it's good to be able to see how um, they use the symbol in a very simple way. But they're able to do a lot with it in terms of um, branding is concerned. Now, the way they brand is a little bit different because uh, for what you guys are doing, you're, you don't have as broad a, 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 a market to, to deal with as Nike does. They have a lot, several different divisions. They have sports culture, they have the Asia Pacific division, United States, brand design, basketball, baseball, they have a lot of different things, um, including running. And all these different, all these different areas all demand a certain uh, look and feel to them. So really, in this instance, Nike provides what's called visual centers. Right here, this word, a visual center, and then they send these out instead of sending out their brand guidelines to everyone. They send out visual centers where their internal groups will develop a look and feel for this particular campaign, which is Road to Race Day. Okay?